Hello my friends, HM here. In today's video I'm going to make crepes or pancakes as we call them in Denmark, but it's a flat kind of pancakes. It's not those American pancakes that are big and thick. I don't like them, excuse me, but I don't. I'm from Denmark, so maybe it's just I'm grown up with pancakes that are super thin and I think you call them crepes when you specifically want to mention those that are super thin, where pancakes is those big ones that are more like waffles. But anyway, pancakes are super easy to make. Let's take a look at the ingredients. I have here enough pancakes for about 15 pieces on this very large pan over here that I'm going to make them on. And it's very simple. I have 240 grams of flour and I prefer to use an organic flour of a fairly low protein content actually. So not a very expensive flour, just a plain vanilla flour. And then you need two eggs and you can basically pour down all the ingredients right away. There's nothing to it. In reality, there's only three ingredients and that's flour, egg and milk. And I'm using a fat milk with 3.5% fat in it. I need 500 milliliter of this or 500 grams of this. That's close enough. And then, of course, we need to spice it a little bit. And the standard spice is, of course, salt. And I add four grams of salt. Also, I have some lemon zest here in vodka, where I basically take a potato peeler and, and peel, peel this. And then I put them here in vodka. And then I can take these zests up and chuck them up with a knife. And I have done that here. So we'll put that in as well. That will give a nice lemon flavor to it. And then there's only one more thing that is, uh, and I'm going to wash my hands here, that's to going to put some sugar in it as well. And um, we can pick any kind of sugar, but why not pick a uh, sugar with some flavor in it? Um, and I just want to have a little bit of apple syrup in it. So, and how much of that? Well, 10, 15 grams, that would be sufficient. Well, that's it. And then we just have to batter it. Uh, and I'm going to use my stand mix over here. Because, why not? I have the machine. I could also have used a, a less, you know, a, a standard hand mixer. But I like this machine here. And I think there's enough batter here to merit the use of it and the cleaning up of it. Afterwards, this one is easier perhaps to clean. But it's just nice and easy when it's in this thing here. So I'll just give it a good whisk. And what else is there to say about this? The batter has to rest for half an hour. So uh, I'll give it a good whisk and then I'll let it rest for half an hour and then I'll be back to show you how to bake them on, on this nice cast iron pan I have here. Okay, this batter here has now rested for about 30 minutes, but I decided it's a little bit too big this thing here to to uh, control so i want to um, pour it into something more controllable that would be this one so let's do that and i already started my pan it was getting hotter and hotter i have to hurry up might be an overkill to have used this enormous machine here it was an overkill i should have used my hand mixer but you know you never learn if you don't try something new and sometimes when you try something new it's just not the right thing to do uh, so I learned that. But anyway, here we have this pan here and it's getting hot. Let's get some butter in this pan here. And I just cleaned up my cast iron again after having made some bacon in it. I haven't oiled it in any way, so we'll see how non-stick it is or whether it should be seasoned. I don't really have time for that. Um, but here we go. This pancake, I don't know, maybe it's too much batter. The first one always get a little bad, but let's see. What I'm most worried about here is whether it sticks or not, because I just treated it with a bath of water and natron baking soda, you call it. In Europe, we call it natron. Let me use my pancake spade here. It was called that when I bought it, but the idea is to 
make as many as I can from this. I know this is about one liter, this can, so I made about a liter of batter here. What did we have? 240 grams of flour, 500 grams of milk and uh, two eggs and five grams of salt and about 15, 20 grams of sugar. And then also spiced it with lemon seeds and vodka. So that's really the recipe for this. Let me put a little butter around here just to loosen it up. It's over here that it sticks a little bit. Over here it doesn't. Strange. But maybe it's just the first one. No, oh, it, it doesn't stick. Great. But okay, you can see it's this that stuck a little bit with the pan. The rest was free. It's less bad than I thought, and it didn't stick. That's good. It's not bad for the first one. The first one always of these crepes always look a little less great, but I think it's okay. I think it's done. Let's turn it around one more time. Yeah, it's done. It's beautiful. And then we put it over here, and I know I'm going to put it in the fridge. I'm going to... Ooh, it's hot. Jesus. And then we oil it up again. And I'm going to have a... This one, because it's getting hot, this pan. Yeah, that's enough. More than enough batter. Okay. Uh, cast iron pans for making crepes are perhaps not ideal because they're pretty heavy. This one is almost like five kilo or something, so it's a super heavy pan. Uh, you should be Arnold Schwarzenegger or something if you, if you should do this flip technique where you kind of cast the pan up and in a short, quick move and then it flips around and makes us lands on the other side. Can't do that with this pan here. I don't have enough muscles for that. I think most people don't have enough muscles for that. It's again over here that it sticks a little bit, but maybe its seasoning has been damage there. You can see it makes this thing there over here. Might be a little error in the seasoning, so I'll probably have to season it again. Well, okay, it doesn't stick. Yeah, I don't think it's a good. Then we take it off like that. And go. And then I'll roll it down. Roll it back. Yeah, that was better. Because it's thinner. The good chefs can make these as thin as possible. But I don't do it very often. Let's see, yeah, now we got it to loosen. It's good. That's the third one. And now the pan is kind of evenly hot everywhere and then it sticks less. And it's very thin, this one. It's a good one, my best. Let me see if I can turn it, flip it. Ooh, that's a good one. But you know, I'm going to clap out and then I'll be back when I have the last pancake on my pan here. Okay, we are back. As you can see, I've made a lot of pancakes. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I hope I can make eight, maybe even eight and a half or something so I can have the last half. But this is number seven, that's on the pan think it's done. We'll just fold it like this. I'm a little bit surprised how few pancakes I can make from this batter. Uh, and I think it's because my pan here is enormous. It might also be because I'm not the best crepe chef here in the world. And also my pan is really heavy, so it's hard to throw the batter around as I probably should. Okay, maybe the last thing here. Yeah, you can see I have almost no muscles to do this. So heavy. But I have more batter. Here we can make a little bit of repair. These holes. Just repairing that. So there are no holes in it. Done. And it doesn't stick at all now. That was kind of the first and the second pancake. It stuck a little bit, but so that's eight. And then I still have batter for perhaps a full pancake. And I have a lot of heat on, so they are pretty quick to, to brown. You can see it's fully brown, evenly brown everywhere. 
The first one I did, that one didn't brown evenly everywhere, so this one does. That's how it is, making these crepes. The last ones are getting easier and looks better. Let's see if we can make one more for me right now. So we have some butter prepared. Let's see, is it done? I think it's done. And fold it one more time. Let's get the last batter in. I think it's just enough for one, barely. Yeah, it's done. Look at how crispy it is over here. <laughs> and I can turn down the heat completely. There's so much inertia energy in this cast iron pan here that it will be browned regardless. Uh, and look at what I have here. It's also some homemade quince jam that I made and also made a video about it. I'm not sure I've edited it yet and put it on my channel, but it's quince jam that I made. I'm going to put that on the pancake and what else is uh, vanilla? Some real vanilla essence. That's from real vanilla. I have like 30 <laughs> vanilla half cut down here and it's in vodka. And um, there's some of that real stuff down here. I really love quince jam. It's so good. Let's see if, if this pancake is done. Yes, it is perfect. Let's find a spoon. Uh, actually, my favorite is just to squeeze some lemon out and some sugar on it. Super simple. If you have used the lemon zest here into the batter of the pancake dough, then you have a lemon that you need to use for something. And really the best use of it is to make some super nice pancakes with lemon juice and sugar. But for this one, I'm going to use this quince jam. And just put that on the middle and then roll it up. You can also use strawberry or raspberry jam, whatever you like. Time to taste. It's crispy. But that was unusual for that one. Mm. And they're good. Let me... Mm. It's a good way to close the day on with such a nice bite of delicious pancake and quince jam. Wow. Okay. But uh, thank you for watching my video all the way to the end. I wish you a fulfilling life in freedom and democracy. Goodbye.